Well, hello and welcome my loyal YouTube subscribers. So let's have a look what's going on. Right now there's a lot of doom and gloom in the market. Yes, I know that there's been uh, the new CPI figures that have come out with a 6.8% inflation rate, the highest rate we've seen in 40 years. Uh, we know that the Omicron variant is spreading across the globe. Federal Reserve is also looking to in uh, accelerate the tapering of its bond purchases and Jerome Powell himself has said that he expects three rate hikes in 2022 because of this increase in inflation. So a lot of things going on there. The producer price index and the core producer price index confirmed that supply chains were far from being resolved. Uh, both of those hitting fresh all-time highs and there is a fair bit of fear in the markets. But when I look at what I see and not what I think, I can just see right now that the markets are in a trading range, right? So I don't look to the news to tell me uh, when to invest, right? Or how to invest, right? Uh, remember, the news comes out to explain what's happened with the price, not the other way around. It's telling you what's already happened, okay? So what we want to do is look at the truth. The truth is the numbers. The truth is the price action. That's what you need to be looking at. So right now, I can see that the SPX is within a trading range, right? We have a new opening range that was set on Friday, the first, uh, the third Friday of the month, which is represented by these two lines here. So just write these numbers down you can see that there was the high on Friday on the SPX of 4,666 and a low of 4,600 so that 66 point range there is the range for the SPX if it moves above 4666 we are in bullish opening range mode if we finish below 4600 uh, or start moving below 4600 should I say we're in bearish opening range mode so keep an eye on those two figures so right now the S&P 500 trading range if I look here at the Dow Jones transports, I can see a bit of a trading range there as well. If I look at the industrials, I can see a trading range there also. And then the NASDAQ, I can also see a bit of a trading range there as well. So not really doing a lot. And the Russell 2000 has been within a trading range for a very long time, right? So yes, there is a lot of doom and gloom out there. Yes, we have had a bit of a sell-off recently, generally speaking, and there's been a lot of fear in the markets. I understand all of that. But when I look at the actual numbers, to me, it just looks like we're in a sideways trading range. You know, this is there's nothing overly bearish about this yet. That can change, of course. But right now, looking at what I see and not responding or reacting, should I say, to fear, uh, I'm going to trade what's in front of me. And right now, it's just a trading range, sideways trading range. So that's all we've got. Now, if we have a look at some of the positions that we've been getting into, again, you got to think about the Warren Buffett quote, right? When other people are fearful, you should be greedy. So with all the doom and gloom in the markets recently and all the headlines and everyone being very pessimistic and crypto moving down and uh, a lot of good quality names moving down, a lot of people got scared, right? They uh, gave into their emotions, didn't have any trading psychology, and they reacted to or the, um, to what was going on in the news and around the world. What I did is I actually went shopping, right? Because what happens is when you see a move down in the market and elevate uh, an elevated fear gauge, you start to see implied volatility rise much higher than historical volatility. What that means in English is that it is time to go shopping because you can sell options for a premium. You can sell overpriced, overvalued options. Expensive options is the word I'm looking for. Expensive options. So that's exactly what we did just recently. And they all expired on the 12th of December. So have a look at some of these trades, right? Talk is cheap. What did you actually do? Well, this was one, um, not so much selling a cash secured put option, but it was a a call debit spread, right? Now, this one right now has a 39% return in a month. We're closing it out, locking in the profit. There was one here on Apple where we made a 91% return in three weeks. So that was kind of nice, right? But now we look back to what we were doing more of, which is agreeing to buy stocks at a discounted price and being paid day one. 
So ABCL, I spoke about this last week. Go back and watch last week's video if you haven't seen it. Um, and, you know, I'm looking for this to move below 13 and acquire the stock. If that doesn't happen, I'll still make a 6% return. So if I have a look at this stock, ABCL, you can see it had a very nice move of almost 9.5% on Friday. So that one's looking very, very good. Now, um, that's one of the ones that we did. Now, also Zoom, I agreed to buy it at 165. Why? Because the premiums were very expensive. If something's expensive, you want to sell it, not buy it, right? So I want to sell options at this point because the premiums were so high. Okay, so what I did is I sold the cash secured 165 put option on Zoom. Why? Because I thought that 165 was a bargain price for Zoom. Now, we were completely oversold on the RSI and we've got a double bottom now that's just starting to break to the upside. So if we get above that 200 round number, start moving higher there, I think this trade's looking pretty good. So that was a couple of trades that we're in right now. But as far as some of the positions that we've just had winning trades on, this one on pins, I agreed to buy the stock at 32.50. I made a 2.6% return in 12 days, right? So let's have a look at pins. P-I-N-S, whoops, that's not pins. There's pins. Uh, I agreed to buy the stock at 32.50. It's right now at 36.50, oversold bit of a double bottom here as well could certainly move higher from here but the point being it finished above 3250 so what happened well what happened was uh, I kept the money and I didn't have to buy the stock 2.6% return in 12 days so that was kind of nice uh, here's another one on SE where I agreed to buy it at 210 it finished at 212 so I made a 1.1% return in 12 days on that one uh, here's another one here on MU. I agreed to buy it at 67.50. Okay, MU. Why? Because I thought that was a great price for that stock. Um, or buying it all the way down here. Now, obviously, it had a big move up, and we didn't have to buy the stock. We just kept the money, so we made uh, a nice return there. 1.6% return in four, uh, 40 days. Now, another one here that we did was on Facebook, right? I agreed to buy it at 280, okay? It remained above 300 come the 17th of the 12th, and I made a 1.1% return in 12 days. I also agreed to buy it at 330 for the 17th of the 12th. I made a 2.8% return. So I made two lots of income on Facebook in the one month, and I didn't even have to buy the stock. How good was that? So that was kind of nice. Uh, another one here that I had a winning trade on, Path. If it remained above 40, I kept the money and didn't have to buy the stock. Let's have a look. Finished at 41.31. So almost, almost had to buy it. I uh, would have been very happy to own it if I did, because then I could turn around and sell calls on it and make even more money. But I didn't have to, right? So uh, very nice return. 4.4% return in 12 days. Very, very nice. Uh, here's another one here on SIG. Uh, I agreed to buy the stock at 80. So let's have a look at the stock. SIG uh, finished at 83.70 and I agreed to buy it at 80. I didn't have to buy it. I made a 2.8% return in 45 days and that was the end of the transaction. So once you really start to learn how to value stocks, how to find stocks that are fundamentally sound, growing their revenues, growing their earnings, growing their free cash flow, that are able to pay their debts when they fall due, they've got great growth rates going forward, and you're not paying too much for that growth, that's when you go to another level and you start to understand the power of options as well. Here's another winning trade that we had on Alibaba, right? I agreed to buy Alibaba at $100. Now, it finished at 122.10 and I didn't have to buy the stock, I kept the money. Now, if I owned Alibaba at $100, right? With a cost basis of 96.80, I would have been over the moon, right? But in this case, it stayed above 100. I just kept the money and didn't have to buy the stock. But if I had of, I would have been very happy with that scenario. Uh, here's another one. Riot, 6.8% return in 31 days. That was a nice trade. And here's another one on Marathon Digital that we just did. For 12 days, 3.4% return. Agreed to buy it at 30. Let's have a look at the stock. Again, I only do this on stocks that are fundamentally sound, growing their earnings, great 
great growth prospects, uh, growing their uh, free cash flow, and I'm happy to own. Now finished at 3385, uh, becoming starting to become oversold. I didn't have to buy the stock, and I kept the money. So you can see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. With those ten trades, uh, plus this winning trade on Apple for 91% return in three weeks, and this trade on CHSH, uh, uh, CTSH, should I say, of 39% in a month. You can see those 12 trades brought us in some pretty good income for the last month, and many of those within the last 12 days. So again, don't look to the news for what you do with your investing right uh, trade what you see and not what you think look at the numbers start to understand how this works and that's when your income goes to another level so thank you very very much for being with me for 2021 uh, 2022 I've got some very exciting new products coming out some new strategies that I haven't shared before that I want to share with everyone here on YouTube and also my uh, members as well I think 2022 is going to be a fantastic year in the stock market and uh, I think in crypto as well uh, provided you understand what you're doing you understand asymmetrical risk and how to protect your downside and how to scale out of your position positions uh, when the profits make themselves available so exciting 20 uh, 22 coming up I think it's going to be a record year for traders uh, provided you've got the right education I'm very much looking forward to it look forward to seeing you guys all again in 2022 we'll be back around the 10th of January somewhere around there going to take a few weeks off well-earned break rest the brain and then come back in 2022 uh, have a great Christmas a great New Year's and I look forward to talking to you all again teaching you some more things in 2022 and more importantly staying ahead of the hurdle rates staying ahead of inflation, growing your wealth, and, and really prospering in a financial system that is rigged against the average person. That's what we want to be able to do. So I want to show you guys how to do that next year. And thank you guys so much for listening. What a fantastic end to the year for our trading. I look forward to talking to you guys again next year. All the best and bye for now.